we live in a complex world of interconnected life. When looking at the natural world, it is hard to imagine how it all came to be. This mystery baffled many for hundreds of years. Creation stories were the only explanation for such an amazing world. It wouldn't be until a man named Charles Darwin had one of the most powerful ideas to ever grace the human conscious. He proposed that life had the ability to evolve. His studies of animals on remote islands and the fossils of long dead beasts allowed him to finally see life for what it is. A living world of organisms constantly changing to better suit their environment. Originally, many were very critical of the theory, but over a century later it stands stronger than ever. We have seen evolution occur in real time. Studies have witnessed organisms evolve new traits and even the formation of new species. The problem with understanding evolution for many is that you can't always see it happen. Noticeable phenotypic change can take thousands of years to occur. Regardless, the process is always happening and humans are no exception. I should note, however, the advent of modern medicine, nutrition, and the reduction of environmental hazards have slowed evolution. Basically, since we are not dying as much as we used to, most are able to reproduce if they choose to. This allows nearly any genes to stay within the population pool and thus drastically lessen the effects of natural selection. Still, we can see the evidence of recent evolution in modern humans especially during the last few thousand years. One example of recent evolution in humans is the ability to tolerate the sugar lactose from milk. In many parts of the world, adults are unable to drink milk due to lactose intolerance. This is because their body switches off the intestinal production of lactase, an enzyme that digests the sugar in milk. This makes milk nearly undrinkable later in life, yet miraculously, more than 70% of European adults can drink milk just fine. This is because they carry a regulatory change in the region of DNA that controls the expression of the gene that codes for lactase. This DNA change enables the lactase gene to be switched on and lactase production to continue, even after weaning. This gene change appears to have happened between 5 and 10,000 years ago, which is around the same time the domestication of milk-producing animals such as cows were established in Europe. The people of Europe five to 10,000 years ago were not the healthiest. Many suffered from poor nutrition and bad water could cause disease. Milk provided valuable nutrients and a cleaner source of liquid. Those who were able to drink milk were more likely to survive the high mortality rate of childhood, thus spreading the genes associated with the ability to drink milk. The advent of milk drinking in Europe was a strong evolutionary advantage for those able to do it. This variant of lactase gene is so common in Europeans that we now consider lactose intolerance to be a health condition rather than the natural process that it is. Since we know that the ancestors of Europeans from the Pleistocene could not digest milk and that many genetic groups alive today still cannot, this is a textbook example of evolution. The change of a frequency of a gene variant in a population is certainly evolution. And it is quite amazing that not only did we evolve, but also in a symbiotic way with our dairy producing animals. One thing to note about this example is that if we were to look at two humans, one who could drink milk and one that had lactose intolerance, you may see no difference. Nothing about their physical characteristics or phenotype necessarily says anything about their ability to drink milk. The evolution of milk drinking was an internal adaptation. This is important to note because the vast majority of evolutionary changes are not noticeable on the outside. Horseshoe crabs are generally very similar to their ancestors that lived over 440 million years ago. On the outside they appear very similar, yet there is no doubt that they are much different than their ancestors. The same applies to our species. Anatomically modern Homo sapiens have existed for around 200,000 years. They were not behaviorally modern until about 50,000 years ago. Another case of recent evolution in our species is the emergence of light skin and blue eyes in some populations. The first Homo sapiens to truly move into Europe around 40,000 years ago had dark skin. 
They would maintain relatively dark skin all the way through the Pleistocene and up until around 8,000 years ago when lighter skin became more common. Hunter-gatherers in Spain, Luxembourg, and Hungary 8,500 years ago had darker skin, enough so to be considered black, but their genes show us that they were genetically European. Light skin would eventually evolve as an adaptation to absorb more vitamin D. This mutation would swiftly run through northern populations to the point that northern Eurasians across the board have light skin. It is amazing that Europeans have been black longer than they have been white. Skin color is such an adaptive trait that always fascinates me. Another fascinating evolutionary trend we have noticed in humans is that our brains are actually shrinking. 10 to 20,000 years ago our brains were nearly 20% larger. That means we have lost about a tennis ball worth of brain mass. The exact reason for this is not known for certain, but several explanations have been proposed. The self-domestication hypothesis posits that natural selection has favored friendly, sociable, less aggressive, and helpful humans, and our brains have changed as a result. Numerous studies show that undomesticated animals have larger brains while their counterparts have smaller yet more intelligent brains. Cognitive scientist David Geary of the University of Missouri and colleagues argued that, as society became more complex, brains became smaller because people needed to be less intelligent to survive and could rely on others to help. One 2014 study suggests that there could be a correlation with cultural development. Because much of our memory of cultural information is now stored externally in stories, art, or books, this has altered our brain significantly. Regardless of the cause of our shrinking brains, a smaller brain does not indicate less intelligence. Men have 10% larger brains than women, yet there is no evidence that either sex is more intelligent than the other. What this shows us is that pure size is not the only factor in a brain's cognitive skills. Though one person may have more neurons than you, neural activity may be more important in overall intelligence. The adoption of agriculture has been one of the most influential on the evolution of humans. Before crops and livestock, we had been hunter-gatherers for thousands of years. Our bodies were well adapted to this lifestyle. Hunting and gathering provided our ancestors with a varied diet capable of warding off nutritional deficiencies. This kept our ancestors strong, healthy, and tall. On the other hand, the adoption of a handful of crops and animals caused many problems for early agriculturalists. Our bodies were not adapted to working fields, our teeth were poor at handling cereal crops, and many had poor diets. Along with this, there is also a significant drop in overall height. Height is determined by genetics but can be hindered by poor nutrition at a young age. Many agriculturalists were poor and had a simple unhealthy diet of mainly carbs. Because of this, since we switched to agriculture, we shrank. We remained several inches shorter until advancements in agriculture, poverty, and nutritional advice. However, this is not actually a case of evolution. During this time, the genes that code for height didn't actually change, just the height of the individuals did. Despite this, people in the Netherlands grew unproportionately larger than their contemporaries. In the 18th century, the height of the average Dutch soldier was 165 centimeters. This was shorter than other Europeans and 5 to 8 centimeters shorter than the average American soldier. But over the next 150 years, they curiously added 20 centimeters to their average male height. Other countries also grew as a result of better nutrition as mentioned earlier, but only by about 6 centimeters. It was found that Dutch women simply found tall Dutch men more attractive, and tall Dutch women were likely to have more children than shorter women. This relatively simple cultural practice made them grow dramatically in only a century and a half. Now they are the tallest country in the world. Height is a very adaptive trait that can easily be artificially selected for as seen in the Dutch. It is amazing to think that European hunter-gatherers were around the same height as many modern-day Europeans, but for about 8,000 years there, poor nutrition caused average height to drop significantly. Though modern humans are slightly taller than their hunter-gatherer counterparts, their skeletons differ in another way. Our skeletons are actually lighter and weaker than our ancestors. This is due to a less active and safer lifestyle. 
One misplaced step for a hunter-gatherer with weak bones could be fatal. Agriculturists were still active people who had attended the farm, but they are less prone to injury and regardless, the large grain stocks could sustain an injured man for many months. Nowadays, most of us in developed countries sit at desks for multiple hours a day. Our bones don't have a reason to thicken and become stronger unless we work out. The trend of lighter and weaker bones will likely continue to proliferate, especially in less active people. It seems that most of us first world desk jockeys are bound to become weak boned, small brained life forms, but not all of us are evolving in this way. The Bajau people of Southeast Asia are actually evolving to become more aquatic. Many of these people spend their days diving underwater to forage for food. They can hold their breath much longer than the average person and can dive over 70 meters down. Now it would be natural to assume that these are just skilled divers that had to learn to be this good. Well, it was found that the Bajau actually have 50% larger spleens than the average person. And it wasn't just the competent divers. Even the people who spend their lifetime in the house have these larger spleens. Spleens help filter and store oxygen in the blood. It is thought these spleens help the Bajau to be such proficient swimmers. To add to this, neighboring farmer villages have the same size spleens as everyone else. A genetic study was done to find the source of their adaptation and it was found to be a change in the PDE10A gene. This adaptation has a recent origin that likely only became common in the last 2000 years. Pretty amazing to think if for some reason these people's technology never progressed and they never had contact with other people, they could become mermaids in a few million years. There are other cases of evolutionary changes happening recently in humans but I didn't find all of them that interesting. But for the sake of the argument, since I know there are bound to be some creationists out there, here are the other changes we have found. Due to modern medicine and overall reduction in disease, the resting human body temperature has reduced in the past century. Australian Aboriginals have an adaptation to help reduce thyroxine levels, which can be dangerous to people living in hot environments. Populations in the Andes Mountains of South America have adapted to be much more resistant to arsenic poisoning because they have it naturally in their drinking water. So yeah, humans, we're always evolving. Even in our interconnected modern world, the evolution of new traits can occur. If we don't make ourselves extinct, the process of evolution may lead to speciation within modern humans. I think the biggest factor in this hypothetical is that we will eventually branch out through the universe. Martians might one day be their own race or even species. With the weak gravity on Mars, maybe their bones would wither away and they might even have a hard time standing on Earth. I do want to make a whole video about how humans will evolve in the future or just the fate of humanity in general, and uh, comment down below if you guys would like to see that. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full-length documentary. If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of North O2. See ya.